The Vector Algebra War, a historical perspective. My name's Derek Abbott, and I'll be starting off this slideshow explaining our paper, and then I'll hand over to James Chappell. The Gibbs vector system commonly utilized today was adopted over a hundred years ago. Since then, the original formulism has required several extensions in order to be able to describe more modern scientific theories. Instead, the Gibbs vector system is often supplemented by complex numbers used in describing electrical circuits, quaternions for rigid bodies, for, for rigid body rotations, Minkowski four vectors for space-time, and complex vectors referred to as Pauli spinners and Dirac spinners in quantum mechanics as shown. Such a wide range of notation required today in order to describe vectorial type quantities has inspired many researchers to look for a more elegant and unified vector formalism. The concept of a vector is actually quite an ancient one, going back to at least the time of Aristotelian science in the 4th century BC. It was in 1637, though, that Descartes uh, produced a more abstract and modern view of a vector, stating, Just as arithmetic consists of only four or five operations, namely addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and the extraction of roots, so in geometry, to find required lines, it is merely necessary to add or subtract lines. In the 19th century, the field of complex numbers was established by Gauss, Argand, and Wessel. It was found that a complex number, when represented on the Argand plane, naturally described a two-dimensional vector. This description of vectors allows for vector division, as well as other arithmetic operations, and so in agreement with the original conceptualization by Descartes. It was then natural to seek a system of vectors suitable for physical space by simply generalizing the algebra of the complex numbers to three dimensions. This was achieved by Hamilton in 1843, creating the quaternions. This achievement was hailed as a historic breakthrough and the correct algebraic description for three-dimensional vectors. This form of vectors also allows for vector division and other common arithmetic operations. Despite the initially high expectations, it turned out that quaternions were not suitable to describe Cartesian vectors in three dimensions. The clue to understanding why this is the case is found in the observations that both the complex numbers and the quaternions actually describe the rotational algebra of these spaces of SO2 and SU2 and so are not actually suitable to describe Cartesian vectors. Hamilton's quaternions, while initially accepted as the correct description of vectors in three dimensions indeed began to run into a series of difficulties. This led Gibbs and Heaviside to look for, an, look for an alternative system of notation to more easily describe Cartesian vectors. This then produced two parallel streams of vector development, that of Gibbs and Heaviside mainly developed by reworking Hamilton's quaternions and the alternative approach by Clifford based more on the work of Grassmann. Clifford succeeded in developing the Clifford algebra for three-dimensional space that we intend to show is a superior formalism. So, what exactly is wrong with quaternions? Why did Gibbs and Heaviside feel the need to completely rework uh, the quaternionic system of Hamilton. We can compare the three vector, three component vectors developed by Gibbs with the four component quaternion of Hamilton. Heaviside stated regarding his rejection of the quaternionic vectors of Hamilton, I came later to see that as far as the vector analysis I required was concerned, 
the quaternion was not only not required, but was a positive evil of no inconsiderable magnitude, and that by its avoidance, the establishment of vector analysis was made quite simple and, is, and its working also simplified, and that it could be conveniently harmonized with ordinary Cartesian work. One of the problems Heaviside refers to derives from the fact that the basis vectors i, j, k all square to negative 1. This has the consequence that squaring a vector will give the negative of the Pythagorean length. This then means, for example, that the kinetic energy will be negative. Strange indeed. The second difficulty is, because all basis vectors anti-commute in Hamilton's system, then all operations with quaternions in general be non-commutative. Thirdly, in place of a simple three-component Gibbs vector, we are required to add a fourth, apparently unnecessary, scalar component. Gibbs and Heaviside indeed provide a persuasive argument. However, if we are not satisfied with the many extensions required to the original Gibbs vector notation, and as no Quaternions have shortcomings, where should we look for an improved formalism? We observed previously that the quaternions provide the rotational algebra for three dimensions. This in, in fact explains why the basis vectors square to minus one, as well as the need for the extra scalar component added to the three vector components. Hence the solution is logically to generalize the quaternions to conclude a Gibbs type Cartesian vector component while retaining the quaternion as a subalgebra to be used for rotation operations. Clifford's description of vectors begins with the three basis elements, E1, E2, E3. Clifford defines a positive square for these so that they are indeed suitable for Cartesian vectors. Clifford's main innovation is, is simply to allow these basis elements to be combined, such as bivectors, E1, E2, E3, E1 and E2, E3. The bivectors now square to minus one, in fact, and are isomorphic to the basis, basic quaternions, i, j, k. The trivector, another composite quantity, also squares to minus one, and is also a commuting quantity, and so it is a natural geometric replacement for the unit imaginary. Further, we can combine all these components to form a general object called a multivector. Using bold symbols V and W to represent three component vectors, we can produce a more compact form for the multivector, as shown. Now, as we required, the subalgebra A plus JW is actually isomorphic to the quaternions. Uh, as stated, V is a, a Gibbs type vector that's now also included. And both the bivectors and trivectors square to minus one and so can be used to represent the unit imaginary and hence complex numbers. Clifford algebra thus unifies complex numbers, quaternions and Gibbs vectors into a single unified real formalism using only elementary algebra. The multi-vector now also allows us to freely add, multiply and divide vectors as Descartes envisaged. The eight components present in the multi-vector can be envisaged geometrically as points, lines, areas and volumes. Indeed, Clifford's system does more than simply provide an elegant system of vectors. It also allows a description of orientated planes given by the three bivectors, as well as an orientated volume given by the trivector, and a point is given by the scalar. We can now see that the key reason that quaternions can be mistaken for Cartesian vectors is that in three dimensions we have exactly three rotational degrees of freedom as well as three translational freedoms. This is illustrated in Clifford's system with three orthogonal lines and three orthogonal planes. This simple overlooked fact appears to lie at the heart of the disagreement between the followers of Hamilton and Gibbs. The Clifford multivector, though, unifies these two descriptions, thus reconciling the two sides and providing a unified and powerful formalism, superseding both quaternions and Gibbs vectors. This diagram also explains why Clifford algebra is eight-dimensional. Note that we have one scalar, 
three vectors, three bivector planes, and one trivector volume. This totals eight elements. The advantage of Clifford's vector formalism can be immediately seen in a simplification of Maxwell's four equations, shown here as shown in most uh, educational textbooks. Using Clifford geometric algebra, Maxwell's equations are now reduced to a single equation that can be simply expressed as the gradient of the field F being equal to the sources present given by J. We have defined the four gradient, a single field variable F and a source term which combines charges and currents. A further advantage of Clifford's more general formalism is the ability to more appropriately represent physical quantities as shown in the table. Clifford provides four categories for physical variables, scalars, polar vectors, axial vectors and pseudoscalars. For example, angular velocity and the magnetic field are axial vectors and are represented by bivectors as compared with polar vectors such as velocity and the electric field which are distinct polar vectors. Extensive use of complex numbers is made in electrical engineering even though the unit imaginary is a completely abstract quantity without any real clear geometric or physical meaning. And imaginary numbers first appeared as roots to quadratic equations which is indeed a fairly abstract setting. Gauss himself acknowledging that the true metaphysics of the square root of minus one is elusive. Using Clifford geometric algebra, interestingly, we find that a bivector squares to minus one and is a rotation operator for the plane, analogous to the unit imaginary. Hence, Clifford provides a clear geometrical meaning of the unit imaginary as a unit area, as shown. We have showed how complex numbers and quaternions describe the rotational algebra for two and three dimensional space and Clifford combines the Gibbs-like vectors with this rotational algebra within a unified system. That is the rotation operators are provided by the even subalgebras acting on vectors in two or three dimensions. The rotation operators being isomorphic to the complex numbers and the quaternions. Now Potential applications include Maxwell's equations, electromagnetic waves, RLC circuits and transmission lines, anisotropic media and metamaterials, relativity equations for GPS satellites, image and signal processing, computer vision and robotics, quantum computing and quantum game theory, and, and many others. A leading Clifford algebra exponent Chris Duran has stated Clifford's mathematical system should have gone on to dominate mathematical physics but due to a lack of recognition that Clifford's system unifies the two formalisms the vector algebra war continues <laughs>